Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Audio Processing in Cubase 12. We're going to have a look at hit points today. These are the things that basically form the foundation of all of the audio processing that we do in Cubase. It's the means by which Cubase really analyzes and identifies what it thinks is going on in our audio. So they're hugely important. If you'd like to follow along with this project, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below where I provide uh, this project in all of its audio files. It's also a fantastic way to help uh, support my channel, carry on making content like this. Right, on we go. Uh, we're not gonna use the solo track today. We're gonna use the other audio track, guitar chords. And when we have a look inside it, you can see that I basically recorded what I attempted to make was as consistent um, a guitar pattern as I possibly could. So this is eight bars of a repeating motif and I'm basically playing the same phrase twice inside each eight bar loop. For today's purposes, I'm gonna throw away everything except takes four and five. And we'll just have a listen to take five before we go any further. This is what it sounds like. So I'm basically repeating that phrase twice. There are subtle variant variations. The idea was that I wanted to play the same thing multiple times to show you that we, we can demonstrate various techniques using this uh, audio file. Now, as you saw, I just deleted most of the events and I've left uh, takes four and five. If I right click on the track, I can clean up lanes to throw away all of that empty stuff. And today it's gonna to be easier if these two events are separated onto separate tracks. That's incredibly easy just by right clicking on the track and you can say create tracks from lanes. Let's click that. It takes a few seconds for Cubase to process that. Basically, we don't need the original guitar chords track anymore. It's created individual tracks with one event on each track. It's also muted uh, the event that wasn't currently in use. So I'm just gonna unmute that. And the first thing that we're going to do is listen to both of those parts simultaneously. Don't need to play the second phrase as well. You can tell that they're nearly identical, but there are very subtle differences. In fact, it actually creates quite a nice effect and it's perfectly reasonable to leave it completely alone. But my task for today is to try to align these two audio uh, files so that they play as close to identically, uh, as close to perfectly in time as we can get them. We're gonna use take five as the master. I'm gonna move it up to the top. That's the one that when I auditioned these two events, that one felt like it had a better groove. It was locked in to the rhythm a little bit better than take four. So we're gonna use that as the master. I'm gonna single click on it and open the editor in the lower uh, pane. And I'm just gonna uh, zoom to locators. I've got it set up on a shortcut key. One of my most used shortcut keys, zoom to locators is awesome. So now you can see that entire eight bar audio event. You can also see as I move my mouse left to right. We're getting these funny kind of colored zones appearing, representing what Cubase thinks is each individual note. It's doing that because it's assigned hit points to the audio. Now, before we go any further, I want you to have a look in your preferences and just make sure that in editing audio, we've got enable automatic hit point detection. That's the thing that allows Cubase to do this immediately. I've not asked it to do this. That bit basically happens as a background process. The moment you import or record any audio, Cubase is gonna do this. It's going to say, I think this is where the, the, the primary rhythmic uh, points of interest are. And for the most part, it's got them right. If we zoom in, we're gonna ignore for today the fact that the audio is a slow strum and it starts slightly before the bar. Don't worry about that. That's not what we're interested in today. This is a slightly strange one, uh, the one that I've got my mouse currently hovering over because there isn't a beat there. This is the tail of the original chord being played. So this hit point is wrong. Cubase has heard something in the audio to make it think that there's a, a separate note or beat there and there isn't. So let's do some editing of the hit points and try to figure out exactly what they're doing. In your left hand panel, you want to make sure that hit points is open. And if you click the white button, then that's what enables all of these playable zones. Before we dive in to have a look at some of these features, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of this, uh, this spurious hit point. 
Now it's slightly unusual terminology. We can't delete them, but we can disable them. I'm gonna press the shift key on my keyboard and you can see the cursor now says disable hit points. Move the song marker out of the way. When I hover over that hit point, it turns white. And when I click it, it goes away. This zone will now be treated as a single zone. If I click the playback slice button. We have a listen to some of these. They're all absolutely fine. But this section at the end, again, it's missed a couple. Listen. Three separate notes there. So now we need to manually add some hit points of our own. Well, we can do that easily enough. This time I'm gonna press the Alt key and we get the insert hit point option. I'll zoom in really tight. This point is where that the second note's played and this thicker line here is where the third note's played. Okay, let's have a look at the second phrase. These notes are all fine. We've got, oh, the curious little zone over here. Let's have a quick look at that. Yep, we don't need that hit point. Shift, click to get rid of it. And this time at the end of the phrase, Cubase has correctly identified each of those notes. It depends primarily on how, uh, how clearly you've articulated the notes. In this particular case, I've played them clearly enough for Cubase to be able to identify what's going on. Uh, this is a pointless hit point here, don't want that one. And then this is going into the next event, but I'll get rid of that point there as well, because that's the beginning of the next strummed chord. And now each one of those uh, notes or chords has been correctly identified, and we're going to be able to use those as basically kind of quantize anchors. If we want to hang our second take, take four, um, off this one, we're going to be able to align them using these hit points. Before we attempt to do that, let's just have a quick look at some of these settings over in the left-hand panel. Let's have a play with threshold. It's currently set to 0%. Watch closely what happens with the editor as I increase this bar. We get two black lines that are parallel. And as I increase the, those black parallel lines, the hit points disappear. All the ones that I manually created are still there. Everything else has just been thrown away. And as I pull them back in, you can see that it's the audio peaks that are defining what Cubase is interpreting as a hit point. So this is where if you've got something that's basically registering a false positive, you can pull your threshold down, take the level, the peak level of those audio events um, below the threshold, and then Cubase will start ignoring them. Double click and set it back to zero. Let's have a look at intensity next. Again, defaults to 0%. If I start moving this one, you get little um, level indicators at the bottom of the screen. Now intensity isn't dealing with peaks. Uh, threshold is dealing with peaks. Intensity is dealing with the, well, <laughs> the intensity, the size, the strength of the signal. And you can see an equivalence if I pick it up again. It's only when you're actually moving the, uh, the, the bar that you see your little indicators. You can see that the louder, the more intense signals have got the larger intensity. Set that back to zero. That's not a feature, I, I, I hardly ever use intensity. I'll generally do filtering, either increasing or decreasing the number of detected hit points with threshold, I find it a much more useful function. Minimum length is similarly pretty uh, easily defined, 20 milliseconds is the default, but if I start increasing the minimum length further and further, you can see some of the hit points being thrown away. The zone isn't big enough to meet the criterion, and so it gets thrown away and beats gives you a slightly more musical, you know, in the context of the song itself, um, how close to one of these grid lines the beat is uh, will depend, will determine whether or not it's, uh, it's allowed to stay. So if I set this to 16th, you can see that it's basically only, it's superimposed this new um, tempo line on me and you can see all the various 16th lines. Can't think of a time when I've ever used that to be honest, so I'll just set it back to all and move on. Removal will throw all of these hit points away if I click that. It'll basically bin them all. Um, the next time you enter the hit points at the edit window for any reason, Cubase will recalculate whatever hit points you need. So it's constantly able to dynamically recreate these things. If I do click uh, remove all though, the manual ones that I've created will be gone. Now there's a raft of create options down below. We're not gonna dive in them, into them today. Uh, most of these are gonna form subjects of later episodes, but there's some really cool stuff that you can do 
by basically using your hit points to generate other data that Cubase is going to use uh, for its processing. For instance, warp markers is how the audio warp tool um, operates. But as I say, we'll deal with that later. Let's stay on point for today. We want to get these two audio parts aligned and we've created all of our hit points and we're perfectly happy that Take 5 now represents the rhythmic architecture of this eight bar pattern. So we want Take 4 to abide by that, by that pattern. If you head to Audio, Open Audio Alignment Panel, let's choose that option. What we're able to do here is specify a piece of audio that's going to be used as a reference by which other audio will be aligned. In other words, exactly what we're attempting to achieve. So what you need to do is select the event that's going to be your reference event. So I've just single clicked on Take 5. I'm going to click plus and you can see now that Take 5 Guitar Chords has been added as the reference. I now select the event that I want to align to that reference track. So that's Take 4. Again, click plus and we're now good to go. Now, for the purposes of today, we're going to attempt 100% alignment precision, which means they'll be lined up as closely as possible. If you decrease that percentage, you're going to introduce a little bit of um, human variance, but let's, let's keep it 100% for now. I'm going to zoom in and make these tracks a bit bigger so we can see that our target track is going to align to our reference track. Here we go. And now if I zoom in nice and tight, you can see that there's a very close equivalence to all of those hit points. If we hadn't gone in and manually verified all of those hit points, particularly remember that section where a couple of the notes had been missed by Cubase, it wouldn't have known how to align these particular notes. It would have had to have leave, left them alone because there would have been no alignment target uh, to, for, for take four to, to adhere to. Now let's listen to those two tracks again. almost as if you're listening to a single part. Now audio alignment is great, but it absolutely relies on you getting those hit points right. Cubase can only do an approximate job. So don't take it for granted that you can simply record your audio, go into the alignment panel and do this stuff straight out of the box. You do need to do your due diligence first. Get into the audio, have a look at the hit points, remove any spurious ones that shouldn't be there, add the extra ones in that Cubase has missed for whatever reason, and you'll be good to go. We'll stop there for today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please hit like. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.